How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this video, we're going to be going over how to assemble the ANET ET4X 3D printer. Assembling this printer is fairly straightforward, but we'll go over some of the trickier parts to make sure you don't get stuck. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to assemble the gantry, and I like to lay all the parts out in front of me just so I have a clear idea of where everything is. Once the frame's been assembled, you'll attach the two rollers for the x-axis to the extrusions. The x-axis aluminum extrusion can be a little bit tricky to line up, so make sure that you have the bolt holes all lined up as well as taking a note of the cutouts which are used for the mushroom caps of the aluminum screws. Once you have the extrusion bar lined up, flip over the entire frame so you're putting the screws through the brackets into the aluminum extrusion. Fastening the screw from the bracket to the extrusion is a fairly straightforward process, and three of the four go in very easily. Once we get to the final screw which is attached to the bracket that holds the x-axis motor, we need to be fairly careful. This screw drops into a bit of a blind hole and it can be difficult to get it lined up. This can be tricky if you don't have a magnetic driver, but it's not impossible. Once the frame's been put together, we're going to attach it to the base. You'll notice that there's two holes on either side of the base, and that's what we're going to be using to attach the frame. Again, this can be helpful if you have somebody to hold the frame steady for you, otherwise it takes a minute to get everything lined up. Once the frame's attached to the base, we're going to drop the threaded rod through the captive nut. Once you get it started, it should just fall through. Drop the threaded rod into the coupler, but don't tighten it yet. We're going to attach the Z-axis to the frame, and once that's been tightened up, we can use the grub screws to lock the threaded rod to the coupler. Once the grub screws have been tightened down, we can then attach the Z end stop directly above the motor. Now we're going to attach the extruder module to the X-axis. I waited until now because I didn't want it sliding around when I was attaching the frame to the base. I used some pliers to help me get the necessary tension to pull the belt through the standoff. Once the x-axis belt is in place, we're going to start connecting all of the electrical connections from the extruder module, as well as the wiring harness. They're all labeled, so it's a pretty straightforward process. Just find the appropriate plug and insert the connector. Once all the connections have been seated, we're going to secure the wiring harness by using zip ties to hold it to the frame. You'll notice when the wiring harness moves, it tugs on a few of the connectors, which can lead to a potential electrical short. Using two zip tie connectors, we're going to attach the wiring harness to the frame, and once we have it fairly secure, we can go ahead and pull those tight. You'll notice that once these have been installed, tugging on the wiring harness will not necessarily result in one of the connectors becoming unseated. We're going to use a similar amount of caution when installing the ribbon cable. You'll notice it can be seated without necessarily being locked into place. You'll notice the connectors on the socket aren't flush with the ribbon cable, so you'll want to push the cable all the way in until you feel the arm snap into place. This will result in a stable electrical connection. With all the wiring complete, it's now time to install the Bowden tube into the coupler. After that, we'll plug in the Z-axis motor. This one can be a little bit tricky. Make sure it's sitting flush so that the Y-axis build plate can easily travel over it. Next, we're going to attach the heated bed, as well as the frame-mounted spool holder to the top of the frame. Once it's been attached to the frame, you can insert the tube in the appropriate nut to lock it into place. And now the printer is ready to turn on. The first thing that we're going to check is to make sure all the motors can move freely, and that when we hit the home button, all of the end stops home correctly. If you've made it this far and the printer homes successfully, that means that you've completed the printer and you're ready to move to the next step, which is calibrating the printer before we print. We do this with a piece of paper, and we'll be covering this in a little bit more detail in another video. The ANET ET4X is an easy build and makes a great weekend project. I've got a few more videos on this printer coming out, so let me know what you're interested in seeing or any tips and tricks for assembly. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.